Today's video is a time lapse slash hyperlapse tutorial with the Ronin SC. I have a A7 Mark III and a Zeiss 16 to 35 mounted on there. And we're going to do a hyperlapse of this countryside here. I'm going to talk you through it and share some tips. When I bought the DJI Ronin SC, I didn't think that it would be any good at doing time lapse or hyperlapse. My experience in the past with gimbals for time lapse has been pretty poor. I've got a lot of gimbal experience, everything from Fleur to Westcam to Cineflex shot over and free fly and a whole range of DJI gimbals. And in the past, they've never quite been good enough for time lapse, for smooth, consistent time lapse moves. This has been a bit of a surprise. I've been testing it over the past few months and I've been really pleased with the outcome. It's come on quite a lot of my shoots and I've got a lot of good time lapse videos with it, a lot of good hyperlapse videos. So today I'm just going to talk you through how I do it and share a few tips. The first thing that you need is a good steady tripod. This one, a DJI send with it, doesn't really do any good. It's more as a tool just to balance the gimbal. So I tend to unscrew that and chuck it away and I have this plate which came with my Manfrotto tripod which I fix onto the bottom of the Ronin and this is really useful out in the field because you can walk around with this plate mounted and then you can easily go from handheld to I don't know if you can see that with the framing but easily go into a, a full-size proper tripod mode gives you a nice steady shot and it also means that on your big tripod which you're probably going to carry around with you anyway if you're like me the plate that attaches to the camera DJI's plate also then fits straight to your tripod so it's, everything's really interchangeable becomes a really useful trio of bits of equipment to take out with you on a shoot we're almost ready to roll the shot is going to be from left to right along this barbed wire I'm focused on the barbed wire so the background should be a little bit out of focus but hopefully that will add to the effect we've got some nice cloud which should bubble up over the next 10 or 20 minutes for the time lapse the camera and the Ronin is set up on my big heavy Manfrotto tripod the steel version you don't really want to be using a lightweight carbon fiber tripod for time lapse use a big heavy tripod the camera is fitted out with an ND1000 filter to slow down the exposure it's going to be at f7.1 around about one second i'm using aperture priority mode as i always do with the sony i'll link a video here or maybe here i haven't figured that out yet it'll be my basic time lapse tutorial take a look at that the settings today are pretty much as per that tutorial um, image stabilization off that's the important thing to, for today both in the lens and in the body. You don't want, as this gimbal moves from left to right, you don't want the in-body or the lens stabilization um, adjusting the frame. Just turn it off, it's gonna ruin your hyperlapse sequence. Okay, so now at this point, I'm gonna turn on the gimbal. It's gonna do its little boot up sequence. Everything else in camera is set. The other important thing that I should have said about camera settings is that I'm on single shot mode. I'm not on time lapse mode or intervalometer. The Ronin is going to do all of that. So now we can go into the DJI Ronin app, go into time lapse mode. It's just told me that the cable isn't connected. This is a common problem that I have. It's because I switched the camera on before the Ronin. So I'll plug that in again and hopefully if I go back into the time lapse mode, yes, it's accepted it. So always turn the Ronin on first and then your camera. So now you need to set the frame in, the start point and the end point. There are a few ways to do this. You can use a little virtual joystick on the app. So I can go left, up and down, and whatever. You could use the joystick on the Ronin itself. A little bit fiddly for my fat fingers. Cut this one this morning as well. Or you can push and hold. I think there's a push and hold option. I always have that on because I find it the most useful. Literally push the gimbal. He says, it's not behaving. 
camera settings. I'm embarrassing myself now. Push pan enabled. So push it and it will hold the position. So you can adjust the framing. So for me today, I'm going to have the start position there. Save that position. The end position is to the right and slightly up and save that as a second position. You want to be quite conservative in the rate of motion. This is something that I fell foul of when I first got it, was that you think, oh great, I can do high plaps, I can go all the way around. But in reality, you need to think that your shot is going to be played back. If you're doing a panning shot, it's going to be played back at a speed that is probably quite short. And in reality, how much of a pan are you going to use in one shot? So it's unrealistic to think you're going to do a 180 degree pan in anything less than say 20 seconds. So you want to really limit the rate of your motion and use something quite subtle because something that might look quite good at uh, 100 frames per second when in reality you make it into a, a video or a YouTube video and it's cut down to 60 frames per second a lot of the frames are dropped out and the motion between each of those degrees of pan is going to look quite shuttery. So be conservative, you don't need much, something quite subtle. It's going to depend a lot on what you're shooting. I've got this barbed wire two meters away from my camera lens, so I just need a short, subtle movement. In the app, it does everything for you basically. I'm choosing the interval of two seconds, my shutter speed in the camera is going to be about one second so two seconds is perfect for me i'm going to set it to do the action over 20 minutes and it tells me it's going to give me 600 photos and a clip length of 24 seconds and that's just fine for me today so hit the button and off we go that's position one first frame second frame I had the uh, problem when I first started experimenting with it where it would shoot once and then it wouldn't shoot anymore. So keep an eye on it. I haven't had it happen in a while. Maybe it's a firmware thing, but it's been behaving itself. Another thing is you can switch the app off and use something else in your phone and it will just carry on for the next 20 minutes. This works for me because I have a compatible camera. It's a Sony and I've got the Sony cable connected to the Ronin. So the Ronin is then able to initiate the shutter on the camera. If your camera isn't compatible, you can still do this. You could just use your camera's inbuilt intervalometer or an external one even if you could tape it on there somewhere. What I would probably advise is that you use the pre-recorded shot mode where it does one consistent move over 10 or 20 seconds rather than the time-lapse mode in the app. The time-lapse mode in the app you probably won't make it out from this camera view, but it moves and it stops, takes the photo, moves, stops, takes the photo. If you're using your own intervalometer and not integrating through the Ronin, then those two actions, your intervalometer and the Ronin's movement are not gonna line up and it's gonna produce some weird and wacky results at a guess. So, um, experiment i haven't done it myself it's just something that i'm thinking of for all you guys with non-compatible cameras now we wait <laughs> Right, I'm going to stop mucking around and instead put the time-lapse footage up for you to see and finish the video. What I do in post is that I always run the clip through Adobe After Effects Warp Stabilizer. I'm not sure how needed that's going to be for a situation like this where there's very little wind. I always do it anyway. I'm not sure how useful it is. So what I'm going to do is put the unstabilized version up and the stabilized version and you can see the difference, see if it's worthwhile. That's it. Any questions, let me know, comment, and I'll try my best to answer it. Other than that, thanks for watching, and I'll see you soon.